Hello, Anime Nyan here, and today I'm just going to do a tutorial on how to import uh, Dead by Daylight models into Blender uh, with animations. So first up, I'm just going to make, I'm just going to show you what uh, is the final product that we're going to be producing in this video or trying to reproduce. So I've made this animation before and basically, um, yeah, it just has the Huntress uh, with her in-game animations in Blender rendered with EV. And this looks absolutely fantastic um, uh, because you can render in much higher quality than you can in the game. So yeah, basically, um, yeah, we have, and you can see that we have the uh, hatchets being thrown and everything. And this is one of the most difficult models uh, to render, especially if you don't uh, have some guidance on how to do it. And basically, I want to give full credit to both uh, Schemo and uh, Fruto, who uh, were invaluable. And I pested a countless number of times on the uh, Dead by Daylight rendering uh, on, 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 on uh, Discord. And yeah. There's also a Discord link in the description uh, that you can have a look at. And basically, um, you can ask any questions that you have here. So just feel free to come here and ask questions and we'd love to help out. So with that all done, let's get to the prerequisite software. So basically, uh, before to complete this progress uh, process, we just need to get some prerequisite software. So first, uh, the first thing that you'll need is your model and just type that into Google and you'll click on the first link and then just click on download. And then from here, you can click on Windows 32 uh, or the Linux version and just download that. So for my version, I'm, I would download the Windows 32 version, but I've already done that. So I won't do that. Um, and then the second thing that you'll need is the Beth ZZ's um, PSA importer and just click on the first uh, github link and then from here what you want to do is you want to grab the 280 direct link uh, this is for blender 2.8 and however I have tested it and it does work with the latest version um, of blender which at the time of recording is 2.93 so what we want to do here is right click and click save link as and then you just want to save it somewhere. I've already saved it here, but I will just replace it anyway. Okay. So from here, what we want to do is we want to uh, extract your model. So you will have the zip file. Uh, if you have WinRAR, you can just right click extract here. Um, you can also extract here uh, with the normal Windows uh, software uh, file managers, just because it's a zip file and that will unzip the umodel.exe. Now, as for the second thing that we need to do, um, just as basic setup, we just want to install the plugin. So I'm just going to open up a new Blender uh, document, press General, and I'm just going to click on Edit, Preferences, and then I'm just going to go to the Add-ons tab. So if you are into, in the Interface tab, you just want to click down onto Add-ons, click on the Install button, and then from here, you'll just navigate to wherever you downloaded the Python file. The Python script and press uh, press on it and click on install add-on so I'm not going to do that because I already have done it and from there you just want to search uh, in your add-ons make sure that the thing is checked the plugin uh, is checked here and my one is and that's all you that's all so that's all the setup you need to do and okay so the second thing that we actually need to do is uh, we want to get the pack files so essentially, uh, the way you do this is, well, I haven't installed, I haven't got Dead by Daylight installed, but um, I will uh, show you with another game roughly what you do. So you click on the settings, the, the uh, cog icon, click on manage, uh, and then click on browse local files. From here, uh, you will be brought into the Steam folder, and you will have a... Uh, folder here, if you have Dead by Daylight installed, it'll be called Dead by Daylight. And it will look, once you open it, it will look something, something like this. So from here, um, it's not going to be entirely the same because this is a different version, but ignore that. 
uh, you will have a Dead by Daylight folder. So just double click into that one and then just double click into the content file. Um, you won't actually have that, you'll have some pack files, but you, you just want to, uh, this is where, know that this is where your pack files will be stored. So from here, what you wanna do is you want to go, um, so I'll, I'll show you what, what it would look like. So for my one, I have copied the files out and I suggest that if you have the space, it is 41 gigabytes, but if you have the space, please do copy it out um, because the reason is uh, if behavior ever decides to encrypt their file, encrypt their, all their files, you won't be able to access any of the models ever again. Um, also, um, just because sometimes the models are changed and you might not, not like how the new models are. So just copy out a copy if you have the space. So it will look like something like this, the inside of the content folder. And you just want to copy that into another location if you can. If not, that's okay. Um, but just remember that's the path that you'll have to take. Okay, from here, just go to wherever you extracted your model. So I extracted it right here. So I'm just gonna double click on umodel.exe. From here, what you want to do is you want to just uh, make sure that this path here corresponds to wherever the content uh, folder is. For mine, I have copied it out, so it's in here, and I would select the folder. However, if you have it on Steam, and I'm just gonna pretend that this is Dead by Daylight, but it's not, obviously. Um, if it's on Steam, so I, I would just do the cog manage browse local files, and just pretending that this is Dead by Daylight, it's not Dead by Daylight, but I would just copy this path into here. I would press Control A and press Control V. But obviously it's not, um, so I'm not gonna do that. And I'm just gonna put it wherever I have put um, the files. Okay, cool. Okay, so once you've done that and you've located your PAX files, just make sure override game detection is checked. Click on Unreal Engine 4 and use Unreal Engine 4.25. Uh, this is the version that you want to use um, for uh, Unreal, so for the latest version of Dead by Daylight, which uses 4.25. The current patch is 4.42. Um, okay, so then you just want to click, click on OK. Um, and also, if you encounter any errors, just try an earlier version, maybe 4.24, 4.23, 4.22, or 4.26 and just check if those versions work when you're trying to open uh, various models. Okay, cool. Now, once you've done that, just press OK and you should be in this menu here. So this does look quite intimidating, but it's basically just, um, you just need to know where various things are. So all the assets that you'll need are basically in this game folder and they'll be in the characters uh, folder right here. And then you just want to click on this arrow just to open up these various things. And yeah, so there's the, there's the campus folder and the slashes folder. They're, they are the most important because the campers are the survivors and the slashes are the killers. So the various killers, the way the models are stored, they're all stored right here. Okay, cool. And the second thing that you might be interested in are the meshes folder right here. So this is for all the props in the map. Um, so you can just have a look here, uh, in this environment folder and yeah, uh, just have a look at, so this, these are all code names, um, for the folders, um, that will show you where the meshes are and the textures, uh, for those meshes are under the textures folder. And if you remember, these are all under the game folder here. Okay. Um, but mostly you're uh, most interested in the characters uh, and everything. Again, a uh, quick reminder that there are um, some code names, the code names in the character files. So you can just look at the pinned messages in the Dead by Daylight rendering folder. Pumpkin has put in all the uh, code names and what they correspond to. So the Huntress is the bear, Leatherface is cannibal, Hillbilly is the crooked and we can see uh, so on and so forth. So uh, for my purposes, I'm just going to open uh, the characters and the slashes 
because we're trying to uh, replicate the huntress. So again, uh, basically just remember the game folder and then characters, campers, slashes are the most important. Campers are your survivors where your the survivors uh, models are stored and basically um, the slashes are where the killer models are stored. So we're going to use the code names and remember you can just go to the pin messages uh, in this channel, uh, in this Discord server, just to see uh, that the bear means corresponds to the hunters. Okay, cool. So now we're just going to go to and left click on this file, uh, this models folder. Um, but basically, we're just going to have a quick look at these. So atom sequences um, is just for the animations. So this is where all the animations for the for the bear are stored. So for huntress, all the animations are here. Uh, materials. Um, we don't need to worry too much about this. And so what we're using, we're going to be using the textures um, folder. So don't worry about the materials folder. Um, um, but basically, uh, the models folder is where all the meshes are stored. So this is where, um, I guess, where the different outfits and the, uh, the head, the bodies are stored. So as we can see, as we open it up, we even more, we have the bodies, we have the accessories for the bodies and we have the skeletons. Skeletons are just um, your armatures. So they decide how your mesh will be deformed. And then we have the masks and we have the mask accessories and all that. Um, physics, you don't have to worry about. It's just Unreal Engine stuff. Uh, montage, I don't, yeah, I don't think we need to worry about that either, at least in my experience. Uh, weapons are where weapons are stored and all their corresponding things, like their animations, models, um, and yeah, so as you can see, we have a kind of pattern here. So it's a lot of this about uh, you model is about learning what means what um, and where is it located, I guess. So anyway, uh, we're just going to left click on models. I'm going to right click there and click on open folder content. Now, right here, you, what you want to do is you want to click on the navigate tab and click on include meshes. So basically this means that only you'll only see meshes, you won't see any um, materials or anything else. So from here we want to click on the page down key and this will just bring up the ne next mesh. So we can click on the page up key to go to the previous mesh. Okay, so since we're, we're looking at the Blighted Huntress, we want to use this model here. Um, but you really need to know what kind of accessories your character has and everything else. Um, so if you want to check that all like all the available cosmetics and everything, you can just search up DBD Cosmetics Guide Steam. There's actually a fantastic guide uh, online. Um, it doesn't have all the cosmetics, but it has quite a lot of cosmetics, and it is by uh, Elastic Heart. And yeah, so you can just scroll down and just see what the various cosmetics are like, um, just to see what's available. Um, but anyway, uh, we're getting a little sidetracked. So we have these various models here. So now we just want to tag the model. So to do that, all we need to do is, because we know that this one's the tag the mesh, so we want to get this one. So we want to go to skeletal mesh, tag mesh. You can also press control T to toggle on the tag mesh thing. So I'm going to press control T from now on. Okay, so obviously we don't want this other thing. So the tagging of the mesh is basically just uh, keeping the mesh on the screen. Uh, so we don't want any of these, we'll keep pressing page down. Um, also, if you see something like this, um, um, so if you see something like this, and it looks all weird, so just press Control G, this will just disable the specular lighting. Um, but anyway, we'll keep pressing uh, page down until we find some new things. Also, the, uh, the, this weird material here is basically saying there is not a material assigned uh, to that specific mesh. Okay, let's keep going. We'll keep going. Okay, so we know that uh, Blighted Huntress does not have any of these accessories, so we'll just skip past all of them. Um, I'm not even sure what this is. Oh, that's just the, the tag there. Yeah, we don't need that tag either. Okay, so we're going to masks now. So this is the mask for the Blighted Huntress, which is good. So we're going to press on Control T to tag this mesh, keep it on screen. Yep, so we're just going to go through the various masks by keeping on pressing um, page down. So just keep pressing page down. Yep, 
we don't really need any of this. And we're back to the start. So that's all good. Um, actually, <laughs> I actually made a mistake here. What I should have done is right click on bear and click on open folder content all over because then you can see everything. So, so actually, so you can continue the process of clicking on page down, but this will also include the weapons folder and some other meshes. So we'll keep on pressing page down and we'll see the static mesh here. We don't need to use the static mesh, okay? So, but we'll see this uh, hatchet here and we'll need that for later uh, just because we need to have the hatchet thrown. So we wanna press control T and just keep this one on screen. Now we'll look for the various weapons. So if you have a look, this is actually the weapon. It's a little bit hard to notice, but this is the weapon that uh, the Blighted Huntress uses. So we're gonna press on control T again. And now we're actually all complete. Uh, there are no other accessories that, or anything else that the Blighted Huntress comes with. I know this because <laughs> I've gone through this process a little bit. And then all you wanna do is press tools, export object. Okay, so from here, you can press on Git um, 2.0, but um, since we have the BethZZ's PSK importer, we are going to um, uh, export as PSK. And all this other stuff is fine, so just click on OK. The default settings are fine. Wait, sorry, I have, did I import in the right folder? Let me just make sure, yeah, so I imported, I exported into my Huntress tutorial folder. So, um, just a a pointer um, that I learned about is that we're going to need this for later, but the texture files here, um, just make sure to keep this, this thing in mind. So if you ever don't know where a texture is, uh, it actually shows you where it exported the various things. So just look in this command window and it tells you sometimes uh, because a lot of textures are actually shared between different meshes because they just make some a different color change or something. So they use the same mesh, even though they're, the, they're a different model. Um, it's very weird, um, but uh, just make sure that to keep in mind, you can look at this command window uh, for when you export the mesh to see where the textures are at. I'll tell you this uh, later as well, just to remind you. Um, but basically, uh, when we just have a look at our uh, files, I will just go to the folder. Um, so, yeah, I'll go to uh, Huntress tutorial. And yeah, so we'll have a look at some of the tech, the, the things that they exported just from this. So, so this was a clean folder. And as we can see, it exported all these files, even for campus, because some of these textures are actually used by the Huntress. You wouldn't think so, but it actually is like even for the survivor textures is used by the Huntress, right? That's why it's very, very confusing. And even the trapper kind of things, like the texture, this texture here is so confusing. This syringe texture is used by the Huntress uh, for her syringe uh, because all the blighted characters use a syringe and they use the trapper's texture for a syringe. Anyway, we'll get into that later. Um, but as we can see, the models are here. We have the bodies, we have the mask, um, we have everything here. So that was just to show you how to do it. Now, we'll keep U model open because um, we need it later. So, and if you get into the screen and you wanna go back out, press O and you can go to this uh, screen to select a new model at any time. Uh, you can also click on uh, tools, sorry. Uh, you can untag all meshes from this menu here uh, if you don't want to see these meshes anymore and you just wanna see the single meshes. Okay. Now, now comes the time where we are actually opening Blender. So as you can see, this is a very, very lengthy process and highly involved, and even more so if you don't know what you're doing. So we're opening a new folder, a new, uh, a new Blender project, and I'm just gonna select everything. So you can just select something and press X and okay to delete. So I'm just gonna select everything, X, press the X key and to delete everything, and I'm gonna press delete. Okay, so now we have a clean scene. I'm gonna press the N key. And if you enabled the uh, PSK, PSA importer, you should see a tab right here which says PSK, PSA. Um, okay, so you just wanna tick the reorient bones thing here. So the reorient directly, um, I asked Schemo and he basically said, um, use reorient directly if the model is not 
if the skeleton isn't working uh, without it. But if you don't need to use it, just don't use it because it'll make the bones really long. So just use my settings. Click on import uh, PSK. And now basically I'm going to, so there's a favorites tab and you want to use this. So I'm going to navigate back to, so I'm just going to go uh, go to Hundreds Tutorial, but essentially you want to go to, to uh, you want to bookmark this folder here, so the bear folder, because we're going to be navigating a lot back to this folder. Okay, from here you just want to put in the bodies, so you want to go models, uh, uh, bodies, and then just import this one. So as you can see here, if you forgot what the navigation is in Blender, it's just scrolling on the scroll wheel to zoom in and out. And um, just uh, cl uh, click on the scroll wheel to uh, move, uh, to pan, I guess. And then, oh no, so to pan is shift, shift plus clicking on the uh, scroll wheel. And just the scroll wheel, wheel itself rotates the camera view. Okay, so as we can see, this looks pretty good. Um, we will be doing something to that skeleton in a bit, but don't worry. So we're just gonna go back up a folder um, and we're gonna import the mask as well, right? So that's looking good. And we're going to also import the um, weapons uh, models and we're gonna be importing both of these. Yep, so as we can see, they're there. So um, what we're gonna do is we're just gonna hide this uh, model. So the models for these two weapons just for now, because we're not going to be operating with them just yet. So if you just notice, if you click on this armature kind of thing, this eye, you're like, why, why is it not disappearing? The reason why is because this is the armature that you're hiding. And this is the mesh that you're hiding, right? So you want to click on the mesh itself. So you want to open this armature menu. Um, and this is parented to the mesh parented to that armature. So the armature is the skeleton again. Uh, and we're just going to hide this, these two meshes for now. Okay. Uh, yep. You will also notice that uh, these things are, they are codenamed. So W007, it's all under the outfit of outfit 007, right? Um, yeah. So, so there, there are, are, they are also in the folder structure. I should probably also show that, uh, because if you just look at these folder structure, body 007, they'll, like if you get the similar things which are 007, they'll also be for outfit 007 basically. Um, yeah, so an outfit 007 corresponds to the Blighted Huntress. Okay, cool. So we've imported the weapons and everything. Everything is absolutely fine. So uh, the thing is, um, this, these skeletons, they're actually repeated. So if you just click on this, skeleton here, this armature, you'll see that it has the same bones as the body. And actually, this skeleton itself is, is actually really bad because sometimes the skeleton that comes with the model when you import PSK can be wrong. And in this case, it is, I know from experience. So basically, instead of doing all of this, we actually also need to import uh, export one other thing. So I'm just gonna click on O in new model and we just want to click on bare models. So we want to we want to export this one. So you can click on right click um, on this uh, BED skeleton. And this is the base skeleton uh, for the base mesh. Uh, what is happening? Whoops, it is not responding. <laughs> this is not great. Uh, whoops. I'm just going to close everything and just open it again because uh, this doesn't seem to be responding well. There's something weird going on. Okay, cool. Um, let's open up new model again and try that one more time. And sorry for the length of this tutorial. Um, it is just a little bit long, uh, but it is, there's quite a lot of stuff to cover. So let's go back to the campers, slashes, bear, models, and let's just click on the export button here. And yep, I'm also gonna export that one. Now, so I'm just gonna import that that specific skeleton. So you, you want to, basically every time you have a, a skeleton, you want to import this base mesh, I'm sorry, this base skeleton 
and not use the skeleton they have because sometimes it can have issues. It can also work, but I'd rather not take a chance, right? And for this one, I know that um, it helps. Um, so we'll use this base skeleton here. So what we will do instead here is we will just, I click on this, this body, this torso. I wanna right click on it. I wanna go, uh, sorry, right click on it. Parent, and we're gonna click on clear parent, right? So it just gets, gets that out that mesh outside of this uh, skeleton here. I'm just gonna delete this one by pressing the delete key. And we're going to, this, uh, this armature here for the mask, we're also gonna delete it, uh, but we're gonna first unparent the mask itself. So we're gonna right click on it, and then click on parent, uh, clear parent. As we can see, we unparented this, and we're just gonna delete the second mask. Okay, so, yep, as we can see, this is all good. And now all we're gonna do is we're just gonna click on this mask mesh first, then shift, select, so shift left mouse button on the on the torso as well. So as we can see, we have these two items selected. These are the two meshes that we want. Then we wanna finally shift select on the armature. So this skeleton here, this is the base skeleton. Okay, so you need to uh, select them in this order, right? Um, otherwise this will not work. So the two meshes first, then finally shift select the uh, armature. Then right click and click on parent and click on um, with empty groups. Yeah, that's all good. And now what you should see is you should see that there are these meshes here. You can also delete this, um, because this mesh right here is just one point. So, so you can delete the BED skeleton ref uh, dot mo. So just click on the delete button once you've selected it. Cool. Now this is all fine, but we just want to test that this is fine because Sometimes you do need the individual skeletons and you'll need an ad to add an animation to all of the um, individual skeletons, but that's kind of a pain usually. But just to check if it works, we're going to import a PSA file, um, so which is the animation. And we actually also need to export it first. So I'll show you how to do that. So we go back to new model and we go to the anim sequences. We're just gonna open this folder we're just gonna get any random animation, that's fine. So we're gonna grab this one, export it, export it here, and that's good. So we're just gonna uh, select an armature. You need to select an armature first, then click on import PSA. We're gonna go back to anim sequences, attacks. And yes, as we can see, because sometimes what will happen is if you try to have them all as one skeleton, it will sometimes bug out and it will cause some issues in the mesh, in one of the meshes, like the mask or something. But in this case, it is fine. So we can do this process. <clears throat> okay, that's all good. So the, this, this is all working, um, which is good. So we're just gonna press Control Z because it's a little bit annoying So because um, the, the animation, um, but we know that our skeleton is all fine. Now, the final part, but the longest part probably is rendering. Oh wait, sorry, not rendering. <laughs> uh, is putting the, the, the materials on this model. Um, and you need to use a specific node tree uh, for the materials. Okay, so the way you do this is you just click on this uh, materials shader kind of thing. Uh, and then you wanna click on the various ones here. So we're just going to basically use uh, we're gonna do the head first, I guess. Oh, we'll, we'll do the mask. Let's do the mask first, because it's a little bit, it's, it's easy, so it's not really easy. So we're just gonna click on use nodes. So from here, um, we're just going to go to the shading uh, workspace, and what we're gonna do is we're gonna drag upwards to, uh, so just click on the corner and drag upwards until you see an arrow um, you can accidentally sometimes like create a workspace instead. Like sometimes I'll do that instead. Um, but just click and drag. Oh God, I'm creating another one. Uh, how do I? Yeah. Okay. So you click on drag in the corner, and then just to get that arrow. Um, yeah. So if you just click and drag in the corner, you'll get rid of them. And then just click and drag on the left side just to make sure 
you have one space. And essentially, the one, the, the shading that we have to replicate here is this shading tab right here. So you have to use this structure every time. It looks complicated. Don't worry, I will do my best to explain it. But you have to keep in mind, this is pretty much the most complex you're going to get. Um, uh, so basically, just a quick lowdown on the various uh, textures. So I'll, I will just go to U-Model and I will go to Bear and Textures and I'll show you what they look like. So as we can see here, all, all the textures are ordered by their outfit. And we have a lot of various files here, right? We're just like, what, what is going on here? Okay, so, so basically the BC is a base color, right? So it, these are all image textures. So if you have a look at them, they'll look like this. So if we just, yeah, so just uncheck the include meshes because we want to actually see materials in this part. And this is what they look like, right? So I'll just give you, so I'll click on page down. Oh my gosh, I actually need to open the whole folder. So let me just left click, right click, and then click on open folder content. Then I can click on page down. And I'll just bring you through all the various things. So this is, if you have a look at the ending, it's BC. So BC is the base color. It's what the color of the mesh is. So BDE is, uh, an emission map. So it only uses the blue channel. If you see any green, it's actually just a glitch. It's a bug when you export from U model. So only the U, the blue areas decide where the glow is for the model, right? So an M is a um, mask. So this decides uh, basically what areas should be transparent and what areas should be not transparent. So for example, if the cloth is ripped, we, want, we don't want to see these black areas, right? Okay, so this is an N. So this is a normal map. So a normal map is basically, um, it shows how, it's a red, green, and blue. Um, and it basically shows how light should be, uh, should sh light and shadows should be shown on the model. So ORM, uh, this one here is, it, it's, it stands for, so the O stands for ambient occlusion. R stands for roughness and M stands for metallic. So it has all these properties of a of the model and basically how it should look. So metallic, so basically it shows how does the model look. Uh, shows the roughness and other things. And roughness is in charge of like how metallic it is basically. And a lot of other things, basically the ambient occlusion is the shadows and other things, but we don't like we don't use the ambient occlusion. Okay, so um, and we have all the things repeating. So if you don't have a file, don't worry about that. Uh, you don't like um, you don't just don't put it inside the texture map. Okay, cool. So and some other things that you'll you'll see. You'll, if you see any other files, we don't care about them because those are the only files we care about. Um, the ones that I just went through. HM stands for height map, and it's, I think it's basically supposed to be like a how how much does something rise above? I guess the the mesh. Um, but we don't really need to use it for our purposes. And yeah, so all these other files I've explained, um, yeah. So now, now comes the question, how do we link them? And we just use this most complex example as uh, a base. And don't worry, once you've done one, you can just copy and paste the nodes uh, from each other. So uh, let's just do, do this, um, how, we, how we will do this is we'll just start off by adding a bunch of image texture nodes. So these are the orange nodes that you'll see on the end. Uh, I will just use this one for reference. So I'll get a shift a separate RGB node. I'll get a mix RGB node. Uh, yep. So, yep, so I will just take care of the BDE map first. So I'll get the image texture um, sorry, not the image texture. I just need an RGB. So this was taught to me by Fruto. So, so full credits to Fruto. Uh, he is an amazing, amazing person who is so generous with his time uh, teaching me how to do this. So again, like when you click on the, once you've clicked on, you have to click on shift A to add a new node. Okay. So shift plus A to add a new node. Okay. Now you want to add in a, uh, there's a mix RGB node. 
but we just change this one to multiply basically and it becomes an art multiply node so you don't need to worry and then we'll just put in a value node here and then yeah so we'll take care of the emissions first so we're just going to put this texture um, image texture we're going to open it um, we're going to find this first so you have to go to the bare folder right so we've exported these textures out uh, we go to textures outfit 007 yeah so what we want to find here is uh, we have to remember which texture are we trying to do so where if you look at the um, the uh, the shader tab we're trying to do the mask one right so we have to look for something that's mask so mask bde right how do we know it's bde because if you just look at this uh, reference image here uh, it will be bde here so uh, BDE must go here, right? So mask BDE, and we're going to just take the uh, blue channel and we're going to put it in both of these here. To be honest, I don't really know. <laughs> I don't really know 100% like um, what a lot of these things do because I'm, I've only just started using Blender a little bit. Um, but I can, but the reason why, again, because the blue channel uh, for BDE is the, where the emissions are, basically. We're not really sure what BDE stands for, but um, it's, it's an emissions map. Um, yep, so we're just going to put in a multiply node. We're going to put in a value of 100. So basically we're mixing, we're making this, um, so I'll just, yeah, so I'll copy these, I'll put in these, these hex, these um, RGB, the HSV values, so 0 0.119, because um, basically Fruto was experimenting and, and he saw that these values are the most appropriate um, for for emissions um, one uh, for the blighted kind of textures. What? Um, wait, actually, I can I can just copy this. But basically, you want to use. I'll copy this value over. Wait a second. What? Did I, did I not copy that? Control C. Can I? Can I copy this node over? No, I cannot. Uh, God, this is going to be sketchy. Uh, <laughs> sorry, I'm just trying to get this uh, HSV 0 0.119. 119. And the S value is 1. And the other value is 0 0.546. Okay, so if you want to, if you want, you can also copy these numbers. And yeah, okay, so we're just going to mix these two colors together, and that will be our emissions kind of thing. Um, so basically, we're just multiplying it because we want the effect of this uh, orange kind of thing to come through a lot, uh, and we're mixing it with this area of where where the blue should be. I guess um, I'm not 100 percent sure on on the textures either. But it works, so I don't think so. I don't, I don't really question it too much. Um, yeah. So now we just want to get some more image texture nodes just for the base color. Um, so the base color. So we're just going to join that to the base color in this. Um, yeah. So I'm just going to go. I'm going to favorite this 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 um, outfit. So I'm going to add it with a plus symbol. So I'm going to favorite this folder so I can easily just go back and forth between the folders that I need to use. So we're looking for mask again. So if we just look at mask BC, right? We're looking for BC because BC connects to base color, right? And we know that BC stands for base color. Okay, the next one is we want to add in another image texture and then we want to put in ORM. And the problem is this is kind of just, it's just mostly tedious tedious work. Um, uh, uh, once you get the hang of it and you know where these things go, I suppose like you could make a script uh, once you you started knowing everything. But um, yeah, so so the green channel, so the red channel is the ambient occlusion again, but we aren't using it because um, we don't need to use it in Blender. Uh, the roughness and metallic, the roughness is the green channel, so we're going to connect roughness to roughness. Um, here, I'm just going to zoom in a little bit, just so then you guys can see it a little bit better. 
and the metallic is the blue channel, right? So that's why we're going to connect it to blue. Uh, the blue, we're going to separate this, the various node, uh, channels to wherever. So the final thing we want to do is just attach the normal map. So we're going to put in an image texture and yep, and we're going to separate, add shift A, again shift A to make um, different nodes again. Separate RGB, uh, we're going to add in the invert. The reason why we add in an invert is because, uh, wait, I'll, I'll just actually just finish this, this one first just before I say anything. Uh, combine RGB, okay, and a normal map. So you just want to search, search them and just make all these nodes. Okay, so the reason why we want to use an invert node just for the green channel is basically just because um, from experience, Fruto said that uh, it looked better this way, and well, I trust Fruto, <laughs> so that's why I'm using using this. By the way, um, if you want to check out Fruto and Schemo, I have I will put their links in the description below. Uh, these are some wonderful people, so please check out their wonderful work. Uh, Fruto makes uh, NSFW uh, DVD um, renders, and he, he does them fantastically. So basically, we're just going to connect all this stuff back up. So so if you just think about it, this separate RGB node, we're not actually doing much, we're just inverting the green channel and then just putting them all back together like normal. So we're gonna open up the in image texture, go to outfit 007. And remember, we're just using the mask and which one are we using here? That we're using the normal, the normal map. So because the normal map connects to the normal one. So if you think about it, it makes a lot of sense. Uh, ORM, uh, so, so again, N stands for normal, ORM stands for ambient occlusion, roughness metallic, BC stands for base color, and BDE is the emissions map. It's like base diffuse emission or something. We're not exactly sure what it stands for. Yeah, but from there, this mask is done. And if you look here, and you go to the rendered mode, uh, the viewport shading mode, uh, oh, actually we won't because I don't have any lighting. We'll go to the, um, the, the viewport shading. Is this viewport shading? What is the difference? Anyway, we'll go to the materials uh, preview mode um, and we can see everything is done correctly, um, except for one thing. Because, you know, the back of the, the mask here, um, the, the back of the um, thing here should actually have a, this should be, there should be holes in this. And remember which one is responsible for that. It is the, uh, the, Sorry, I forgot as well. It's the M, the M, the M thing. So I'll actually just look back at my old model. Sorry, sorry, I am cheating. But yeah, so actually, sorry, we needed to add in the M. So the M one is, this is the most complex that you can get. I will just, uh, sorry, I'll show you. So if you want to have a look at this one, just for reference, whenever you're doing this, just use this one. Okay, so I will just close all these. So this is the most complex uh, RGB uh, texture setup that you'll need. And this is the most time consuming bit, uh, but do not worry, your efforts will pay off. Okay, so we needed to add in one more, which is just that uh, node there. So I'm gonna go back to the shading workspace. I'm gonna add in one more image texture and it's a little bit messy, so you can just, uh, Click on a couple of nodes, and just just move them move them up, if you and move them around, uh, just so it's a little bit cleaner, you know. Um, okay, so I'll put in this image texture here, and and the thing is, you really want to be looking at what kind of things do you have here. You have BC, you have BDE, you have M, you have N. So we know that. So the the reason we know to put in an M and all these other ones is because of what files are available for this. Um, this mask kind of thing. So it's mask 007, that's why we know to use this one. Okay, so we're gonna use M. So the M is in charge of alpha again, so we're just gonna to go to color to alpha. Um, and yes, that's basically it. And the thing here is we actually need to change for this material, we need to change this to alpha hashed, um, if I remember correctly. And it should render correctly here. Let me just double check if that was the setting. Uh, I used it for this one as well. 
So this mask one, I was oh, sorry, I was using alpha clip. So alpha, so you need to mess around either alpha clip or alpha hashed. And I'm going to type in a value of 0 0.145 uh, because it works best. As you can see, like if you put in more, uh, you'll see that it clips out more of it. You put in less, it will clip out less of it. So 0 0.145 was a good value for this um, specific one. And yes, this is textured correctly. Uh, congratulations if you made it this far, because this is very difficult, and I do understand as well that it is quite time consuming. Okay, now we just need to repeat that with every single mesh. So if we just look at the mask, we just look at this second material, it is repeated. I think it's used elsewhere, like probably in the eyes or something. Um, okay, so now we need to click on the torso, and I will just repeat this process. But before I do that, I will go back to the mask. I'll go to this mask, I'll go to the shading, and I will just collect everything here. Oh wait, sorry. Before I do that, I just want to go through a few settings. There is one setting here. Let's just uh, put in this to 0 0.1, the specular. Um, and everything else, sheer tint, uh, yep. emission strength. Yeah, emission strength should be five, sorry. Okay. And yeah, so that's all, that's all good. So from here, we can just copy this one and we'll be using it for the rest uh, to save time. Um, so just copy everything. So select everything, then press Control C and you should be fine. Now we're just going to go back to the, uh, to the layout tab and we're just going to workspace and just uh, click on the body. And now we need to do this, press use nodes and let's repeat this process. It's gonna be fun. <laughs> I'm kidding, it's not. But um, so now you can just delete everything here. Uh, and then, yeah, put in this. Now, all you need to do is basically just change these specific things. So we're just gonna look here, it's for head 007, right? So we're looking for head 007. Head 007, so I see a BDE here, good. Okay, now um, that's all good. And now we're looking for a head 07 BC. Right, good. And sometimes I make mistakes on this one as well. So looking for a head 007M. So there's not none of that one, right? So we can just delete this, this one for, for this specific um, material. And this one here, ORM, right? So we're looking for uh, head ORM, right? Yep, that's good. And now we're just looking for one final thing for a head N. Yep, so we have a head N. So we're just gonna double check before I put in that in. So B, C, B, D, E, N, O, R, M. So that's all the files. And we have put all four into here, right? So that's good. And we can actually just check back. Just make sure that we're going fine. Um, we just look under, did I do that correctly? Uh, layout shading. Is this all correct? Yeah, it should be correct. Yeah, it looks fine. Um, wait, what? This is very weird. <laughs> sorry, sorry, sorry. Uh, no, no, that's fine. It's fine. It's all good. Um, then let's just copy this one to the next one. Accessories. Uh, so we can just copy all these nodes. Press Control C. Oh yeah, we have to press the Use Nodes button. So remember, you need to press the Use Nodes button, otherwise it will not work. Okay, let's go for the next one. Accessory 007. I'm not sure why this is not rendering though. It's a little bit weird. Um, okay, okay, that's all good, it's all good. Um, accessory 007, so I think, actually, did I make a mistake here? Accessory, no, no, no all good. <laughs> Sorry for second guessing myself. I am just, this, this process is just very, very annoying. So yeah, so we've got accessory 07 BDE. Um, we're gonna put in the accessory 07 BC. We're gonna put in the mask. Um, yep, so for the accessory 07. And then we're gonna put in the ORM for accessory 07. And then we're gonna put in the N for accessory 07. Yeah, so this process is very, very um, time consuming and it requires a lot of concentration because you need to make sure you're using the correct one. So let's use use nodes again. We'll delete everything here and press control V. Um, actually, one second. 
Picture output. I'm just confused why it's not it's not really showing anything on the head. Uh, maybe I made a mistake. I'll double check that later. But anyway, let's go for the next ones. So I'll just go through this quickly. So accessories, we're looking for BDE. Wait, sorry, axe. We're looking for axe. Yeah. Um, axe. Okay, actually, yeah. So the axe is actually axe is actually something else here. I will just check what I used here because I'm because um otherwise I won't know. Uh, but basically, I used B, the B O E W S O one B C. So this one is a little bit of a tricky one because you need to just double check. So it's not in the outfits anymore. Um, it will be in just in this one here, outfit 01. And it will, will just be the BC. I'll use the BC here. And the, the reason you can tell uh, where it's from uh, is you'll just have to experiment and you'll look at, you'll be like, hey, wait a second, that is texturing this thing right here, this, uh, this hatchet, right? So this, M, this MIB X01, that's the material for this hatchet. So I will just use, so, so I will check, I will try some different nodes until it looks right. Um, yep, we're gonna keep going, go BIOS, uh, BIOS, so we don't need to worry about empty files, um, but we do need to worry about, about um, other types of files. So we're just gonna delete this M, I'm gonna use this ORM, I'm gonna use this one, and we're gonna use this N file here. Okay, we're gonna use this N file here. So we don't actually, if you just look at the files here again, we don't have a BDE. So we don't actually need to show the BDE one here so we can delete all these nodes right here. And we're just gonna just double check that it's rendering fine. And as we can see, the material for this is very nicely done. Okay, yep. Oh yeah, so this accessory here, so as we can see, it's having this black thing here. So we know that we attached that um, that M, that M file here. So now all we need to do is just use uh, one of the settings. I will cheat and uh, just check what I used with this one. I used alpha clip. Yep, so alpha clip and 0 0.5 was fine for my settings here. So you can just adjust it up and down and just see uh, what's the effect. Uh, but 0 0.5 is just fine here. Okay, cool. Now the next one we want to do, we want to do is, so just click on the mesh again, and we want to look at another material. You basically have to go through all of the materials. Um, you want to look at legs here. Okay, so we're going to click on the use no nodes, click on um, uh, sh the shading thing again, and we're just going to delete the pre-existing nodes and just put this in. Um, yeah, so the legs. So let's look at outfit 07. So legs, where is legs? So we have legs, we have a BDE texture, good to know. Um, we have a BCE, we have a BC. We have a mask. Do we, do we have a mask? Do we have a mask, so an M? Do we have an M for uh, legs? Yes, we do. Um, do we have an ORM for legs? Do we have an ORM for legs? E yes, we do. And we, for, do we have an N for legs? Yes, we do. So we're just gonna attach the N file. Okay, cool. So legs is fine, um, but we will also, because they have that M, that M uh, file, as you can see the black there, so it does want an alpha clip here. So I will just use alpha clipping, alpha clip, alpha clip. Um, let me just double check what I used for my other file as well, just because, because um, a lot of this is under experimentation and I can't exactly remember um, what I used. Yeah, so alpha clip is fine. And let's go back to the materials. As long as they're white, you can tell you haven't done them. So just use nodes. Um, let's go back to the shading. Let's delete the hair. And let's, wait, let me just double check. I used legs for everything. You can just have a look at whether you use the legs. Um, 
So you use the same title uh, for the image textures. That's a way to check over if you've done the right thing. And just checking if the model looks okay from it um, does because <laughs> like look at this, this hair is obviously wrong because it's using the wrong texture, you can tell uh, because it's using the eyes on the hair, which is very weird. <laughs> but yeah, so you can tell that it's the wrong one. Okay, so let's just uh, remedy this one then. Let's just quickly find the hair. Hair, okay, so the hair has no BDE, right? So first, like I just looked at all the files and I could see there's no BDE, so I just deleted all those. And let's just look for the BC. So we're looking for hair BC. And hopefully this tutorial does make sense. Please feel free to ask in the Discord channel uh, in the description below or in the comments section. And I will try to answer any questions that you have. So we're looking for M. And so ignore the HM files, that's height map files again, but we don't need them, okay, for the purposes of Blender. Okay, ORM, we're looking for hair. We have no ORM, so that's okay. That's completely fine. So let's just delete these two nodes for ORM and we're looking for an N and that's all. Okay, so, but we also need to do the alpha clipping here because we had an M. So you'll see that they have this black weird thing. So we actually need to add ORM to them. So I will just double check what I used again for here just to make sure I'm correct. Um, I used alpha hashed and it's either alpha hashed or, or alpha clipping, um, but you just need to experiment and just see what looks right. So alpha hashed and alpha hashed. Yeah, so yeah, so this one, it looks, it looks right, right? So you can you either use alpha clip or alpha hashed. Okay, cool, We're looking good. Okay, let's move on to the next one then. So let's just scroll back up to texture the next one, the torso. Okay, so the torso, um, we're just going to use nodes again. And yeah, so let's just, just delete everything here. Press control V. Okay, so torso, torso, torso. Okay, so let's just get the BDE and the BC. The torso and the torso. Let's look for an M. Is there an M file? No, there is not. So I will just delete this M thing here. Okay, so is there an ORM for the for the um, for the torso? And the answer is yes. Okay, so essentially it's just a pattern. Once you've once you've found it, you know what's what to expect, right? So we're just going to check that everything's torso again. It all has the prefix of torso. Yes, the answer is yes. They all have the prefix of torso. So we are good. Okay. And we have no M file to do the alpha hashed kind of thing. Okay, so now we need to do the syringe. Now this one's a little bit more complicated. Um, I myself didn't even realize it. The reason why it is complicated is because this a lot of these textures are just from are from the from the trapper. So you, or some of these textures are from the trapper, and you wouldn't know that. Um, but because again, as I mentioned before. Some te some textures uh, share 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 a common or some models share a common texture or different textures. Oh no, sorry. Some textures share the same model. So because they have recolors and everything, um, and they want to reuse as many textures as possible. You know what I mean? Okay. So for this one, I will just uh, press use nodes again just to have everything and delete everything here. Remember, you always need to use nodes, otherwise it will not work. Okay, um, if you try to control, uh, paste anything into it. So first things first, we're going to use the syringe, what we can. So syringe, um, the, the BDE. Uh, so we're going to look for a BC, BC file here. So syringe, uh, BC, this one here. And then the mask. So do we have an M file? So the answer is no for the syringe. So we're just going to delete this M thing. Uh, for the syringe, we're going to look for an ORM. And this one is actually under tra trapper. So yeah, this one's very difficult to realize. But you just go under trapper textures outfit 06. And it's easier if you only export one one thing to a separate empty folder. 
because you will know that these things are appearing even though you so like the trapper textures are appearing even though you just exported uh, Huntress. So you will know where like sometimes weird files and you you can keep an eye on them. So this TTR should be that. And now the final thing is we want to add this syringe N. It's because it connects to the normal map. And we should be fine um, to the best of my knowledge. Let's just check it out. Let's just check out if everything's working fine. Yes, everything is working fine, except that face. I have no clue why that face is not working. Let me just try getting that face working. So I'll just click on the model again. So it's this thing here. So what I will do is I will go back to the shading tab. I will delete everything here. And I will just control V it again. Um, oh wait, no, no, sorry, sorry, sorry. Yes, I, I will just delete everything here again. Come on, <laughs> if you would just delete everything. Um, and then just press the use nodes. Okay. Sorry, wait, use nodes. Okay, yeah, so I, I didn't click on the use nodes there. I think that was what was throwing it off. And I will just fix everything again. So I'll just use the head, head again, head BDE, the head, the head uh, BC, the, let's look for the head. Wait, am I going to Yes, okay. <laughs> Sometimes I just second guess myself because I think I've selected the wrong one. Sorry, I'll zoom in a little bit. Um, the head. The head, um, looking for the head, the head M, sorry, uh, God, this is actually really hard to see sometimes. The head, there's no M thing, so we can delete the M again. Uh, so you just need a lot of practice, right? So so we know that we're going to look at the M, the ORM again, and we know that the, ma, the head has an ORM, and we know that the head has and N here somewhere. Okay, cool. Now let's have a look if everything is textured properly. Now, if because we are in the material preview mode, we can see everything should be detailed uh, properly. Just remember that, like, even though it looks shiny here, it's okay because basically um, this material preview mode is equal light everywhere, and that isn't how a realistic scene will be rendered. So it can be a little bit shiny, but I will just double check to make sure the specular is 0 0.1 for everything. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, so the final thing that we actually need to do is we need to make sure that the weapons are also textured. So let's click on the weapon, but this is fairly easy. It's not too bad. So M-I-B-E-S-W-O-1. So from this, we'll click on the use nodes. We'll click on uh, delete everything here. Press on control V. Uh, we probably don't need this entire thing, but let's just have a look at what we need. So we're just going to uh, click on the open folder thing again, as we've been doing this whole time. So we're going to look at uh, outfit 01. Uh, so we're looking for the BESW01. So we need a BC. Um, we need a... So we, we don't need an M for this one. We don't need a BDE, because I know they both don't exist, just looking at that uh, folder structure before. So we just look at this, we need an MT, we don't care about MT files. N, yep, okay, that's fine. We don't care about R and S files either. So R, O, R, M, we're gonna put in the O, R, M here. Um, and we're gonna also put in the N. Um, yeah, cool. And yeah, so that, that one's fine here, so as we can see, that looks fine. Let me just double check that that's how I textured this one as well. Um, am I, let me just check it. Yeah, so that's how I did this one as well. Cool, all good. And then we'll just hide this one again. So we do have separate armatures for these ones, but we will, I'll show you how to do them in the final thing. <laughs> and sorry for the length, but most of this is, is just showing you how to do this. It does take a long time, even if you know how, what you're doing. So press on use nodes and then press um, shading. I go to the shading tab. Uh, I'm just using the scroll wheel to pan on here. So I click down on the scroll wheel and delete everything. Press control V and then, yeah. So we're looking for the BEW07. So this is probably going to be with the actual outfit 07 because the outfit 01 is, is probably your original outfit. And that's where a lot of 
stuff that's shared between the outfits, such as hatchet will be. That's why I used, I knew to go back there. And also that I've done this. Um, so let's, so we're looking for BEW07, right? So let's look for a BDE. So BEW07, actually, sorry, this will be actually under bear. So let's go back to the bear folder where we exported weapons, um, textures, and outfit 007. So this one will be under uh, here. So yeah, so BDE is here. Uh, let's look for BC and let's, I should probably just um, bookmark this folder. So if I, I'm gonna bookmark this textures folder um, for the 007 uh, thing. So let's, let's put in the BC. Let's put in the M. Do we have an M? Let's have a look. Do we have an M? We do not have an M, right? File. So we're going to delete this M node right here, and we're going to um, put in this ORM node. Let's look for this textures, outfit 007. We're, look, we're looking for an ORM. Yep, so ORM, we have one, and we have an N. Uh, let's just go back. So we have an N. And yes, uh, we should be done. Ah, uh, yeah, and, and this would probably be a good time to save. I didn't mention that, but you should save very, very often, as much as possible, because if your computer crashes, it will not be great. Um, and you won't be able to have any auto saves if you don't save your file at least once. So I will call this Light Huntress. Lighted Huntress, okay. Okay, that's all done for so layout. And yes, as we can see, the weapon is looking nice. Um, it's looking okay. Okay, okay, so now um, comes the final step. So uh, after you've done all this work, we want to have these weapons attach to the correct positions on the skeleton. And essentially every skeleton actually has a specific thing. So if we just look under uh, this skeleton, which is this one right here, um, we're gonna look under hand. So if you just look under uh, the pelvis, joint pelvis, um, torso, 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 keep going down, um, clavicle, I'm just gonna pull it out a little bit, shoulder, elbow, hand LT. Now each, each skeleton has a specific bone over here. So if we just go to, we go to edit mode by clicking tab. So you will actually see that if I select it again, you will see that it's actually, uh, if I find it again, sorry for all the trouble, I will find this. Elbow, hand LT. So what the joint, the joint, so there will be a, a specific bone right here, which is the where the weapon will go. So you essentially need to put a object constraint um, on the armature of the weapon so that it lies on this bone right here. Um, yeah, and that's basically what you need to do. So I'm just gonna press tab again to exit edit mode and go back to edit object mode. Okay, so then I will show you how to do it. <sighs> okay, 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 okay. Um, let's just finish this up. Um, okay, so from here, uh, this is what Schemo pretty much told me uh, how to do it. So, so now we need to select the object, the armature of the weapon. So let's just select, so let's close everything here. So the armature of the weapon, so we know what the armature of the weapon is by this one, right? It's the one that we are seeing right here. So I'm seeing, so it's this one here. I'm gonna select that and add the constraints like so. So, so we're just going to go to this object constraint tab. So just go to this weird icon kind of thing and let's add copy location and a copy rotation. Okay, cool. Um, Oh good. Now the targets here, we want to use just the BED skeleton ref.ao. So we it's, it'll be this one, right? Because we want to attach this BEW007 ref to the skeleton, um, which is this one here. We want to attach it to there. So that's all good. And we want to attach to the, the bone. 
right here, and we're looking for the very bottom one. So just keep scrolling down for weapon, weapon RT. So yep, that's all good. And then now we just want to copy rotation um, with the same with the same settings. So BED skeleton ref bone. Let's keep going down. Let's scroll down to weapon RT. And yes, yeah, so this is actually all right, right? Um, but there is a little thing, right? So, yep, yeah, I'm just gonna make sure that everything's fine. Yeah, so actually this is all fine because once you import the animation, it will look okay. Okay, um, but let's let's do this to the, to the second second one here to the um, to the hatchet now. So this one should attach to the weapon uh, right uh, weapon LT. Okay, so let's get this, the BED skeleton ref, because we're attaching it to this skeleton again. So we're, we're, we're doing a, uh, we're not doing a bones constraint, we're just doing object constraints. So, okay, so we're just attaching this hatchet again. So object constraint, copy location, target, BED skeleton ref, that AO bone. And we're just attaching this to the very bottom. We need to scroll, keep going, scrolling. And we're going weapon LT, right? Okay, now we need to add one more, which is the copy rotation. And we want to attach it to the BED skeleton ref. Again, same bone to the LT. So we're attaching it to the left, the, where the left, so this is a, how should I say it? A left, a left, because they have a slot for where the weapon should be, basically. Um, let me just double check, <laughs> check if I'm getting this right, because that's actually not quite going on right. Uh, let me just check the bone constraints. Yeah, I have this fine. Okay, yeah, so this, this should be okay, I think. I think, so now the way to test if this is, this is okay is basically we just need to import an animation here. So, um, one second. This is actually not working. <laughs> so the BEW07 ref. Let me just look at the layout tab again. It's the BE. Yep, so it's attached with. Wait a second, B E. Yep, okay, wait, so I'm just going to check one thing. Yeah, so the one thing that you need to do, sometimes the weapons are the wrong way around, and basically you'll have to change the rotation here. So if I just change the rotation um, by just going back to the item thing, and I just go 180, so it may look like it's completely wrong, but it is actually right. And then I check the negative 180 here. So this is why this process just has so many kind of uh, things. Um, wait, that's really weird. Okay, so I found the source of my error and basically um, when I clicked on the mesh, um, I actually added a object constraint and I shouldn't have done that. And I put it on this target uh, BED skeleton ref that was causing the error. So I just deleted that and it's in the correct place now. Um, yeah, okay, cool. And then basically, uh, yeah, so if you just import different animations, so from here, we're just doing the animations here. So let's just bring up this um, dope sheet and we can look at the action editor. So from here, we can basically import uh, different anim uh, animations and just check how they look. So for example, I can just um, import this. Um, so, the, so, the, so what happens, um, so if we just look at these, these uh, animation files, we have to realize that we, we can't use the FPV files because this is the first person view files. And this is where that a lot of the animations are screwed up because they look very weird. I'll show you what I mean by that because the first person, um, so well, just don't use them. <laughs> Basically, just don't use them. Um, and we can switch between like the different ones because the first person view is intended for you to be in front 
of the camera, like, like right there. Um, but you aren't, so yeah. Okay, um, yeah, so, and that is basically it. So you can, you can change between these various ones. You wanna import some animations. Uh, I will just import everything in this attack folder. So I will just shift click all of them. So, so just click on one of them and then shift click to the bottom and click on import PSA. And it will just import every single one of them. I did import some of them twice, but that's okay. Okay, cool. So now we can switch between them. Um, and we, we'll just check how it looks. So just press shift space and um, you'll see how it looks. Okay, so yeah. Um, so yeah, so if you wanted to just um, have this appear sometimes and have it not appear, you can just keyframe this alpha value. Okay, so the final thing that I'll teach you is just using the non-linear animation uh, kind of thing. Um, yes, so actually I added some animation to this. Basically, I didn't need to add animation here. Um, whoops. Um, clear animation data. So I right click and I clear animation data because I only need it on the skeleton because the skeleton moves everything else. So if we just check this mesh, we can just change this alpha value and we can change it to one and we see it and zero, we won't, won't see it, right? So basically, um, the thing is, if we want to see it, so, so okay, so now we're in the non-linear animation kind of thing. I would just put it on one for now um, and make sure that the, the settings blend mode is alpha clip. So we're just gonna push down this animation to the non-linear uh, animation um, track. We're gonna push it down to an NLA track. And yeah, so as we can see, and we shift space, this is already fine here. This looks fine. Um, but what we need to do here is for some other PSAs, for example, let's go to the action editor as well. I need the action editor in this other tab here, maybe. I'll just go to the dope sheet and I'll just go to the action editor. I'll change it to another one. How about let's change it to, um, to an idle. In fact, let me just, uh, let me just export some extra ones. Let's have a look what looks like a good one, idle. Yeah, so I'll export some of these. Um, so I'll right click, click on export folder content. I'll press okay. Okay, so yeah. So now I will just import those files from the locomotion. Press control A, or no, I'll just click on the first one, then shift click to the very bottom, import PSA. I'll import all of them. So we'll just take a little bit, don't worry about it. It's just um, importing all the animations. But don't worry, we're actually, we're actually almost done here. Oh wait, I imported it for the wrong thing. I am so sorry. Um, I need to clear, I need to clear this animation data. So right click clear animation data. Um, basically I need to import it for, I need to click on the correct armature. I need to click on this skeleton before importing PSA. So now I'll just do that again. Shift click to the very bottom, import PSA. And now this will give me um, all the animations. Just loading a little bit. Yep, I was just save this for now. And now we can just uh, look for all of them. So essentially we can just play this, stand slash 01. I think this one's just a static one. <laughs> Let's look for a different one, slash to hunt, how about? Wait, what? Why is this not quite doing it. Oh yeah, because I pushed this down to a track actually. So let's push this down to another track and let's move it over a little bit, about here. And we'll press shift space bar to show how it works. Okay, cool. So this is an animation we need to kind of not show the, the, um, the, the thing for it. So, I'm just gonna put this down to the same track so then, and just try and push it left so I don't, 
So I, I snap it pretty much to the left and I can't like have any more or less. Uh, so there won't be any awkward space in between. So essentially we know that this, for this animation here, so I will just delete this one here. Uh, and we know that this for this animation, the hatchet should be hidden here. So in order to do this, we're just going to hide it for these frames. So for, for frames 31, 31 to, 50, to the first, right? So we're gonna make a keyframe here. So I'm just gonna click on this mesh here and I'm going to keyframe the alpha value right here to, I'm just gonna make a keyframe here. And then where is the, the part that we should see this, this uh, hatchet, I guess. So let's just um, play through the individual frames. So with the left and right arrows. So around here is where I think that it should appear. So I'm gonna put, change it to one here. Um, and then I'm gonna make a keyframe here. Um, but the thing is this, this animation here is actually not quite what we want because it's not constant. You'll see what it looks like is, is um, wait a second. Yeah, so, so it, it should be constant here. And the way we do that is we're just going to go to the graph editor and we're going to look, change this filter to without only show selected. And then we're just going to change this right here, um, interpolation mode. And we're going to, so I'm going to select both the keyframes, right click on it, interpolation mode, constant. So this will make sure that it appears instantly, right? Instead of uh, going up a little bit, uh, it just goes from zero to one. If you have a look here, zero to one. Uh, the, and yeah, so it's not really going anywhere else. So that's, 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 that's how you would do it. Okay, so the final thing I will show you um, is just how to, how to get this rendering properly uh, with EV and all that. Because right now we're just in the material preview window. Um, but, that non but from here, like as in the non-linear animation thing, you can pretty much change actions in the action editor and push them down to a uh, non-linear animation track. And and just have things in sequence. Because as you can see here, this is how I created the throw, and then it goes to that other thing. Obviously you wanna use things that are more sequential, uh, that like actions that flow into each other. Or else, another thing you can do is, if you just press shift space bar, you can press the N key here, and if you just go to the strip kind of tab, uh, you can, um, if you just expand this a little bit more and just move it a little bit to the side, what you want to do is you can have this blending kind of thing um, blend out. So you can have this as like 30 frames. Um, and basically, <laughs> that's too long, sorry, maybe 10, uh, 10 frames. And you can have this uh, kind of blend into the next animation if you have a look. Uh, well, this one also needs to be changed as well. So I just need to change this one. And I need to, so I need to click on this one and go to the strip tab and blend in, let's go 10 frames as well. So this, then let's just play it and just see how it looks. Yeah, so they blend both the animations as you, as you can see. So this is how to smooth between different animations. Okay. Okay, so the final thing that I will show you is this thing right here. So how to render this properly. So if you look in the, the review here, you'll be like, why is this rendering so badly? The reason why is because your lighting is, 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 is not great. Um, so we actually need to make some lights and we need to make a camera. So I'm just gonna make a camera here and I'm just gonna move it on the, so I'm gonna press G, uh, Z, oh sorry, whoops, G, Y. And I'm gonna move it along the Y axis. So that's just G is moving it and Y is moving it along the, X, uh, the Y axis. Now we're just gonna move it up a little bit. And now we're just going to go item, oh uh, wait, tool. Uh, where is this? Sorry, we're gonna to go to view, sorry. We're gonna to go to the view. So when you press N again, just remember you can press N, then just go to the view tab and then camera to view. 
Now press zero on the numpad and you wanna just uh, get the, this in frame. So with, just by using the, uh, clicking on the mouse, the scroll wheel and, and shift selecting to pan uh, and rotating with the shift, uh, you know, just uh, scroll wheel and uh, scrolling in and out to zoom in and out. Yep. So we can just put on the render settings. Um, I'm gonna put an ambient occlusion bloom. Um, the rest is okay. Um, uh, then you will have to just change, just go to this tab here, the printing tab, and I'm gonna change this to, you can change this to whatever you want, but that 3,840 times like 2,000, 2,160 or maybe like 3,000. So yeah, this is okay. Um, and basically now we just need to take care of the lighting. So we're just gonna press zero and I'm just gonna uncheck camera to view. Now we just need to take care of the lighting. And the way we do this is, we're just gonna have two tabs. Uh, sorry this tutorial is so long, I may actually end up separating it into multiple tutorials. Okay, so I'm gonna grab one extra window here on the side. And in this window, I'm just gonna press seven. So for my top view, seven. And then I'm just gonna click Shift A for a light. So, and then I'm just gonna click on light. I'm gonna click point light. And I'm just gonna move it to the side here. And I'm just going to, uh, for this view, I'm just gonna press N and then just zoom it in to the front view. So I'm just gonna use one, or I'm just gonna use zero just to show you, just to see what the effect of the light is. Now we're just gonna change this light. Um, so we're gonna press N, N on this one. So press N and then press tool. Oh wait, item view, where is it? Sorry, oh sorry, no, it's here, it's here, it's right here. Um, light, so go to the light tab and we're just gonna change this, we're gonna bring this right up. So we're gonna bring this right up until we see it's it's just, it's, it's, it's um, covering some of our subject that we want, right? So you don't wanna light everything, right? So you want to have some shadow, right? Um, that's okay. Um, we might actually end up, I think that bloom is actually quite significant. I don't know why it's so significant here. I might actually end up toning down that bloom a little bit. I think I might've changed one of the settings. Uh, but anyway, so that's okay. Um, then we're just gonna shift D, bring it light to the other side. So we want this light just to look like this. Uh, so we're gonna use three point lighting. So you wanna just check the individual effect of your lights and just make sure that there's still some shadow there. So this one's adding a little bit too much light here. So I would probably turn down the shadow just a bit, uh, turn down this light just a bit until I just see some of the shadows coming, popping back in. This is just your, cause that's your normal light, um, your spotlight. And then this is your uh, fill light. And then you have your backlight just to uh, illuminate from the background. Okay, I'm just gonna bring it up a little bit as well. And this one should be your brightest and it just separates your subject from the background. I'm just gonna bring this right up until we can see some kind of lights popping in. Um, but essentially that's it. <laughs> from there you can just mess around with the bloom settings. I think my bloom was just too high. Let's just look at my bloom settings actually here. Can I, well, not 0 0.8. Yeah, so around like seven, like six, it works more for this model. I'll press zero again. We're looking fine, and yeah, I think it also might have been my 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 emission intensity um, in my textures. Let me just double check on my actual model. Whew. This is quite a lengthy tutorial. Um, let's look at this. My emission is five. Let me just check my render settings. My bloom two point eight. Ambient occlusion. Yeah, ambient occlusion. Yeah, but anyway, you can just mess around with the settings from here. It's it's mostly just a settings task. And I'll just increase this light intensity just a little bit. And I just wanna see what is the effect of this light individually. Okay, so it's okay. Uh, maybe just moving to the side a little bit. Cause I want to see that highlight. 
pretty much. I want to see the highlights in the background because this is a a um, a backlight, right? It's just designed to add a little bit of an edge, I guess, to your subject. Um, yeah, that's okay. I'll just consider it done here. <laughs> okay, from here, basically, you are done. You've got your lighting set up. You've got everything set up. And all you need to do from here is I will just close this window here and then I will grab this one up and then I will put the nonlinear animation window. So you will just edit these kinds of things until uh, by adding animation, like switching animations in the action editor and then you just push it down to a track into the nonlinear animation and then just organize it here until you are fine with it. So I'm just gonna bring this window down. Oh my God. I just wanna bring this window down. And we're just gonna check how, is it, how does it look. So we're just gonna sh shift space bar. And yeah, this looks fine. I'm, I'm fine with all this. So if I'm fine with all this, um, <laughs> even though like, yeah, so even though the keyframes is a little bit weird uh, for the actual X, um, but um, we're gonna ignore that for now. All you need to do from here is just click render, render animation, and then, or render, render image. Um, and then from here, you have your perfectly rendered uh, thing, uh, image for Blender. And as you can see, it looks absolutely fantastic. We can change the, um, the, the, Render settings here by, so you can render an 8K by just changing these resolution settings here and also changing your render, render samples. But other than that, that's pretty much it. Thank you for being here. Uh, you are my lifeblood. Anime Nyan out.